We recently brought you a tale about the mermaid fin fad. The fins bind your feet together so you can swim like a fish, and they're becoming quite popular. But there are safety concerns, and they've been banned at pools in Edmonton. Well, after we brought you our mermaid tale, we got a lot of response, some of it from people who consider themselves actual mermaids. Stephanie Brown is a mermaid swimmer, teacher, and performer from Halifax, and we've got her on the line now. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning from the East Coast. So glad to be here. Well, so glad to talk to you. Uh, Just curious, is there a big mermaid subculture out there? Uh, There absolutely is. Um, I run a business here, Halifax Mermaids. I also run Atlantic Mermaids and uh, Canadian Mermaids. And we have a number of people who work for us. And um, our company provides uh, children's entertainment and environmental education as well. I have a background in um, child development and uh, elementary education. So we apply that in many different ways. Uh, We do tourism events and filming for television and music videos. Uh, We do uh, volunteering for children's charities like the local hospital and it's a, it's really quite booming but it's actually really big in the United States and it's only just sort of starting to get big here in Canada. So have this has it been going on for quite a while? How long has it been around? Um, I think most Canadians would be surprised to know that um, mermaiding, as we call it the verb, (laughs) uh, has actually been around for 100 years. Um, It started with this amazing woman, Annette Kellerman, um, back over 100 years ago. Uh, She was the first person uh, recorded swimming in a mermaid tail. Um, She was a a sort of a fitness mogul, a feminist icon. Um, She was arrested for wearing uh, the sort of famous Marilyn Monroe bathing suit. She invented it so that she could swim better because prior to that, you know, women were expected to swim in these big dresses. Um, And she was in the first movie um, that was filmed underwater and cost a million dollars to make. And uh, Esther Williams actually portrayed her in a film called Million Dollar Mermaid. Um, But it doesn't stop with her, you know. um, It's become a really big part of um, different subcultures in different states um, in the U.S., especially Florida. They have the the Wikiwachi mermaids who started at the end of the 40s, and um, that was uh, it's a big underwater performance theater where ever since the, uh, the late 40s, you've been able to see women perform in mermaid tales. Um, it's become quite the staple now. You can go to many aquariums. Actually, most aquariums in the United States now have an adult mermaid performer who performs in tanks, many of them with sharks. Um, you can go to, there's bars in the United States where there's mermaids that swim in tanks around the parameters of the bar. And uh, it's just really taken off. Yeah, I can un- I can understand why in some bars they'd like to see mermaids swimming under underwater. Now, uh, critics have said that these these mermaid tales are dangerous for children. What do you think? Um, I think there's an inherent risk with any um, childhood activity. You know, if you're going to do hockey or gymnastics, there's there's risk there, and um, swimming with a mermaid tail is no different. Um, but Canadians should know that there's a few things that haven't really been addressed in the media. Uh, one of those things is that. Um, there have been no recorded incidents at all since the inception of mermaiding uh, over 100 years ago. And even in um, more modern times since the 70s, when it started to pick up and become more popular, and even in the last few decades, when it's become more popular with children, uh, there have been no incidents. Um, I don't think many people realize that the fins that children are swimming with actually come equipped with emergency release buttons or uh, emergency release protocols that children can get out of them very quickly. Uh, mermaid tails are actually buoyant, so uh, they don't tend to make you sink. In fact, uh, as a mermaid performer, I have to put weights in my tail if I'm doing any kind of filming that requires me to stay underwater for a long period of time. And um, I'm sort of concerned with the ban that because of the ban, it's actually going to raise the risk a little bit um, because prior to that, children at least were swimming where there were lifeguards and people who could save them if there was an issue. Right. And uh, now they're going to be forced out of that. And, uh, you know, there is such an interest in this that I'm concerned that children are going to start swimming in lakes and private pools and not have someone. Um, I've actually been speaking uh, – I was – uh, invited by someone from the Life Saving Society to give a presentation about it. So I'm really hoping uh, that's going to happen. But, you know, there's definitely inherent risks. And I think it's important that um, parents are supervising their children and that we're reading the instructions that come with each mermaid fin. Um, but I think it, it just would have been better to have a compromise, such as like a swim test, which is what we do out east. And, you know, it's worked very well for us so far. 
Yeah, so you're you're I guess you're disappointed they've been banned here. Yeah, yeah, it's just um I feel like children are being denied um an opportunity that was so life-changing for me. I mean, um I have chronic illness and chronic mobility uh problems, so you know, like I wasn't a strong swimmer and um and I was able to learn this very quickly and uh I never imagined it would take off the way it did. Um I make a whole career out of it now. It's very fulfilling. I get to travel the world. Um I even give uh we have mermaid conventions in uh different parts of the United States and uh, I get to go give professional development development to other mermaids on how to be more accountable with their business and how they can be developmentally appropriate uh, when they're performing with children. And uh, it's been so empowering for me, and especially for young girls. Um, the physical fitness component of it, you know, it's, it's not opinion anymore. It's fact. It's been studied over and over that uh, girls are not being encouraged in physical fitness to the same degree that boys are. And uh, it's, it comes with so many issues like body image as well. And uh, with childhood obesity, rates being so high, we should we should be embracing these these activities that the children are already so interested in and just finding ways to make them safer so that we can encourage them. I mean, you can burn up to 500 calories an hour using a monofin. Wow. Well, Stephanie, you're a passionate advocate for mermaids, and we want to thank you this morning for chatting with us. Thank you so much for having me on. I hope everyone has a great day. Good day to you, too. Stephanie Brown is a mermaid swimmer, teacher, and performer from Halifax. It's 18 minutes after 6.